Welcome to Wheels Boy. If there's one thing that I've learned since I started reviewing Chinese cars, it's that while our viewers really love seeing big, flashy EVs from the likes of Neo, Li Auto, and Hi-Fi, they reserve a special enthusiasm for small, fun, affordable EVs. If you fit that description, boy, are you going to like today's review, because we're going to be checking out the newest, most affordable model from China's largest electric automaker. This is the BYD Seagull, and it costs just 10 to 12,000 US dollars. Welcome to Wheels Boy, where we cover the newest, coolest, and wildest vehicles from the Chinese car market. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. While many of its competitors, such as the Wuling Bingo, use a cute and friendly design language, the Seagull takes a much more aggressive approach. It's all hard angles and harsh LEDs. To use a dog metaphor, if the Wuling Bingo is a fluffy little Pomeranian, the Seagull is a scrappy little pit bull. Of course, the Seagull's efforts to look intimidating only make it look more adorable, because it's tiny. At 3.78 meters in length, it's more than 20 centimeters, or about 8 inches, shorter than a Honda Fit. Its wheelbase, however, is only 3 centimeters, or about 1 inch shorter. Squeezed between those bumpers is either a 30 or 39 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate blade battery pack. They deliver CLTC ranges of 305 and 405 kilometers, respectively. Now, they both also have fast charging, which means this thing can go from 20 to 80 percent in just about half an hour. You may have heard that this car is going to be available with a sodium battery pack, and it is. Just not yet. Maybe the sodium battery will do better, but the ranges on these lithium iron phosphate units turned out to be optimistic. I would estimate the real world range for this larger battery pack to be closer to 300 kilometers. Still a usable range for such a small, cheap car, but it doesn't sound quite as impressive. See what I mean by harsh LEDs? Looks a little bit like a robot to me. If we open up this hatch, we will find one of the few areas where this car falls behind the Wuling Bingo, and that's in terms of cargo space. You see, the Wuling Bingo's cargo area is so deep that you think you might find the Titanic at the bottom. Not so with the Seagull. There's still usable space, as you can see, but if you're planning a really big trip to the grocery store, you're going to need to lay down that second row. You can get the interior of your Seagull in black and blue, black and green, or, as is the case with our test car, full Barbie spec. This car is part of the Ocean series, along with the BYD Dolphin and Seal, but I have to say this interior design is the least ocean-inspired out of all of them, probably because all of those design flourishes cost money. I am pleased to see that they retained one of my favorite design elements from the BYD Dolphin, and that is this compact row of switches below your center screen. From the right, we have a physical volume roller, Thank you, BYD. Much appreciated. Keep it coming. Then you have some air conditioning controls, hazard lights, uh, auto hold. Yes, auto hold is standard, as well as your driving modes. And finally, what is probably the smallest and most adorable little transmission knob you will ever find. You just kind of wiggle it like this, and then park is a button on the side. All three trim levels of the Seagull come with a 7-inch instrument cluster and a 10.1-inch spinnable center screen. The interface is the same one used in every other BYD, it's just a little bit slower. This thing only comes with one USB charging port, which feels stingy even for this segment. The good news is you are compensated by having a wireless charging pad, at least in two out of three trim levels. Bad news again though, this thing is slipperier than a used boat salesman. Anything approaching spirited driving, and spoiler alert, more on spirited driving later, and this thing will have your phone flying into another zip code. Material qualities. Well, this thing costs ten to twelve thousand dollars, and it certainly feels like it costs ten to twelve thousand dollars. Hard plastics, pretty much everywhere. There's some pretty good soft touch points, like on the center console here, as well as on the armrest. It doesn't feel inappropriately cheap for such a cheap car. This is a tiny car, and you're not expecting a ton of space in here, but you can find some cargo areas. 
take for example, well, actually don't take for example here because there is no center console storage area. It looks like it's supposed to be able to open, but no, it can't. Below there though, you've got this center storage cubby. You've also got a glove compartment, pretty decently sized. But what I really wanna talk about when it comes to the inside of this car is seating position. I gotta tell you, this thing not only has the most comfortable seating position that I have ever experienced in a car this small, but it also has a more comfortable seating position than some much more expensive EVs that I've driven. If you thought there wasn't much to see in the first row, just wait until you get a look at the second row. There's really nothing back here. No USB port, as I already mentioned. No fold down center armrest, though I wasn't really expecting one in this class. The only thing I noticed, uh, you got a little storage area here between the seats. And then also, again, one of the best seating positions I've ever found in a car this small, or indeed in many other EVs that are much larger. Not only do you have a pretty decent amount of leg room, you also have a decent amount of headroom as well. I am five foot nine or 1.75 meters tall, just for reference. Are you interested in buying this or any other Chinese car and exporting it to your country? As long as you don't live in the United States, Canada, or Western European markets, reach out to us via email at info at wheelsboy.cn. We can connect you with a reliable exporter who can help you to purchase and export a Chinese car to your country. Before I hit this button and take this thing out on the road, let me address an issue that may have been swirling around in your mind. How safe is this thing? After all, driving most of these tiny Chinese EVs is like taking a long walk off of a short pier because their safety technology is minimal to non-existent. That's not quite the case with the Seagull. This thing does a pretty good job in the safety tech department. It has standard front airbags. It also has standard side curtain airbags, front and rear. Our top spec car also adds standard side airbags for front passengers. This thing also has the optional driver assistance system, which includes forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, and adaptive cruise control. I suddenly don't feel quite so terrified about driving this car now. Let's cut straight to the chase. The BYD Seagull absolutely beats the brakes off of all of the competition in this class when it comes to driving dynamics. Vehicles like the Wuling Bingo are incredible because they provide a ton of practicality for a very low price, but they drive very poorly. Throwing one into a corner is no more fun than doing so in a golf cart. Not true for the BYD Seagull. It has much more direct and much less rubbery steering for starters. It has the same McPherson strut front suspension and torsion beam rear as the Wuling Bingo, but a wider front and rear track. It feels much more agile and planted than that car. It encourages you to throw it into corners. The biggest weak point, honestly, are these cheapo tires. They squeal at the barest hint of lateral Gs. If you put some decent tires on this car, it would be a real ripper. Keep in mind we're talking about a little hatchback with a single front-mounted electric motor making just 55 kilowatts and 135 newton meters of torque. But I've enjoyed driving this car more in the last three days than I have almost any of the much more powerful, much more expensive EVs that I've driven this year. Now part of that is due to the fact that I know if I really poop the bed and crash this thing, I could reasonably afford to fix it. But it is more than that. I think this captures the spirit of feisty subcompacts like the Suzuki Swift. They're not fast or powerful, but they encourage and reward you for entering a corner just a little bit quicker than you probably should. Of course, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. This is a very cheap, very small car. Having adaptive cruise control is great, but NVH at 80 kilometers per hour will have you wondering which window you left open. Take it up to 120 and the four speaker sound system just can't compete with the wind and tire noise. You're better off just using headphones instead. But that compromise is true of every other vehicle in this segment. What they don't provide in exchange, and the Seagull does, is the wee sound that comes out of my mouth every time I throw this thing into a corner.
I suppose I should simply be grateful that there's finally a fun to drive EV in this segment, but instead, I can't get this one thought out of my head. BYD Seagull GTI, a slightly more powerful front motor, upgraded suspension and brakes, better tires. Now that, that would be an incredible amount of fun. BYD, get on it.